Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we're going to do another top five. We are going to look at the top five reasons to use a GNU Linux desktop in 2017. So I watched a video recently where the uh, the uh, host was talking about reasons to use Windows versus reasons to use Linux. And to me, it seemed as though he didn't really use Linux a whole lot because every argument that he made for why you should use Windows and not Linux really wasn't valid in 2017. Maybe it was valid in 2010. So I'm wondering if maybe that was just what it was. And um, this was, was this crazy? Chris's, it was Chris's tutorials, I think. I'll find the video and, and link it there down there below. Um, but I really disagreed with pretty much every reason to use Windows on his list. Um, and I'm not a person that's going to sit there and say you should never, ever, ever use Windows. I think each person needs to make the decision for themselves. But what this channel is, is an invitation to have a look at the Linux system for you to see if it's something that, that you can run. Because the majority of people, you could, and probably in many cases should, run Linux for your personal system rather than use Windows. You know, there's a lot of work applications. You may need special customized Windows applications, and that's cool. And uh, if you're a hardcore gamer, you probably will need Windows to do the gaming. That's cool. But if you're talking about just checking email and looking online and organizing your photos and all this kind of stuff, there is no reason not to use Linux on those systems because you're going to have a little bit more secure of a, uh, of a system. So for my top five picks, why you should use a Linux desktop in 2017, number one is that Linux is not a malware target. Um, not a significant one, we shall say. Now, Linux servers, perhaps, there's some targets there. Uh, but as far as the overarching uh, prevalence of malware, viruses, and things like that, you are going to be a whole lot safer on Linux than you are going to be on Windows because Windows is such a large attack vector. And if you would like some evidence of this, I will remind you of this week, Wanna cry, anybody? I lost it all! No, I didn't lose it all. In fact, one person even criticized my approach to making backups because this right here is an entire Linux operating system. Guess what? This will not get the WCry issue. On top of number one, it is not Windows, which that targets, but this is not connected to a computer or anything else. The hard drive's not gonna fry due to a power outage. The the, uh, it's not going to be a, get, going to get attacked. It's nothing else. But this contains a backup copy of all of my music and all of my photographs. You know, those precious photographs that, that we all have. All of the documents, all of that kind of stuff is on this as an external device, not connected. But... This here, what happened with this particular, uh, what happened with this particular virus going around? It took advantage of that Samba uh, issue that was not patched back in March by enough people. Now, part of this is too many people are still using XP, and that's dumb. And too many people are using unpatched versions of Windows, and that's also a little dumb. I should say stupid because dumb technically means you can't talk, um, but. You know, this prompted Microsoft to quickly release a patch even for XP computers because of the wide prevalence of them still in the system uh, out there in the world. But the thing is, is that this system was a worm, which means that it is still out there. And if you do not have a patch system that is protected from the Samba port, you can still get this thing and it will decrypt all your files or it will encrypt all your files, I should say. And then you will have a very hard time getting them back. Um, good luck paying them. They may or may not get you a decryption key, who knows. But you know what? I'm not gonna be super bothered by it because suppose they wipe out my Windows computers? Mm, oh well, I got all my files backed up. Um, so that's kind of one of those things to think about. You know, window, uh, a Windows computer is a much larger malware target. 
And even if you have the most recent patched up-to-date computer, there can still be some vulnerabilities inside of Windows. And that kind of brings me to the second, uh, the second reason is with Linux, you get a whole lot faster security patches. And uh, the reason that that is significant is that um, the uh, uh, this this WCry worm that went around, Windows 10 was not going to be affected by it. A patched version of Windows 7 or Windows 8 would not be affected by it. A lot of people don't keep those unpatched, but look at what happened. The vulnerability that took advantage of is the Samba server vulnerability, which in March, it was finally released to the public, and then they had to skip the Patch Tuesday. And when they skipped the Patch Tuesday, what ended up happening is that the computers went for another six weeks with a known Windows vulnerability. Because Windows generally only pushes out its patches once a month. And with Linux, it will push out the patches as soon as there is a patch, you can go you can go and download it. Now, that's a more superior option. Now, why is it why is it Windows does that and why does it make sense to do that in many ways? Well, it has to do with the fact that you do not want a Windows computer to automatically patch and update everything automatically, which is their current model that the computer automatically updates itself. In a business environment, you can brick a system doing that. In fact, in a personal one too, but who cares about the poor personal users? We just got to focus on the business clients, right? And the the thing is, is that they, they do it on the second Tuesday of the month so that the IT guys can schedule a time to make sure all the patches and bugs and stuff are worked out. But the way Linux rolls it out, they can test it at their convenience. They can schedule a specific time if it corresponds to Patch Tuesday, or they can look at something and say, that's a secure enough thing. We need to carve some time in the next 24 hours to do it. And with Linux, you get those security patches as soon as they are made available. And on top of that, the patches that you do get, you can see a whole lot better what they are actually going to do. So um, on my computer here, um, and I have some, some updates to do yet. I've not updated the computer in a couple of days. I can come over here and I can click on this and see what is it I'm actually trying to update. What is the thing that this would like to do? So you can see what it's doing there. The thing is on a Windows, you don't get any of this. You just get some long, boring code. You gotta take the code, research online. It's a lot more difficult to figure out what's going on. So with the Linux system, you will get a lot faster security patches for issues that, that do come up. The third reason why you'd want to use Linux instead of Windows is you can choose your options. Okay, choosing your options is a useful thing. Maybe you really like the way Windows is set up. That's great. There's a Linux distro that will be set up just like that. In fact, if I go back and show you my screen again, I can show you that this computer is set up just like a Windows computer because that is the way that I'm most productive. I have my tasks down here on my taskbar. I have everything grouped together. I have a button down here where I can click it and go to show the desktop by minimizing everything. Now, this is what I like even better is I really like the older version of the start menu. The new thing they call a start menu in Windows 10, it's an app menu. You can't customize it, you can't adjust it, you can't control it, it's just a giant hokey piece of crap. But on this thing here, I can set this guy up exactly the way I like it. I can use this default, which is very similar to how the original start menus would work, or I can customize this. I can put my most used software applications over here on the edge, or I can organize things however the way that I like them to be. But regardless, I can set it up. Suppose you don't like those options and you wanna look at, uh, at other options, that's quite okay. I pulled out a few of my videos uh, from the past so you can see what I'm talking about. If you wanna use a system like this, here is one of the options. So this is from Ubuntu. So you can see what this guy looks like, a little bit different system setup which is a very cool system. If you wanna use some other customized type system, 
here is a what is called a budgie desktop environment. So you can choose your entire layouts and your entire options of what your computers will look like. If you really like a Mac type approach, here's elementary, not my favorite type of platform, but this is certainly it is a, a valid choice for uh, if you want to have a Mac looking type system. So you can see that uh, the setup here is, is very simple, very clean interface. A lot of people like that option. If you want to get something so slick and modern looking, this one here is my current Linux um, Linux Mint KDE system. You can see um, you can see here how um, uh, how uh, clean and, and modern and transparent responsive it happens to be. Very modern type design, very nice interface. Or you can do even the, the newer flat type systems. Actually, I don't have any any videos pulled up of the flat interfaces. I'm not a huge fan of those, but you can do it. It certainly is an option that you have. So this one here is called Farron OS, another one that's very similar to a Windows type clone. But you can choose your various options inside of a uh, Linux platform. And that is, in and of itself, is just a fabulous thing alone, is you can set it up like a Mac, you can set it up like a Windows, you can set it up like none of, none of the above and just create your own custom thing. Very easy to choose your options and choose your configurations. And with Linux, you have that ability. You can do the modern, flat, monotonous design if you prefer, or you can do some older style video or some, some older style things. You can even make it look like a Windows 95 computer if you want, but you can do that. So with Linux, you can choose your options. All right. The fourth reason I wanted to pick out to use Linux instead of Windows is portability. So I happen to have here a series of flash drives that I can use to install, uh, basically I can use to run, not install, but run Linux on any computer. So this flash drive is a 128 gigabyte flash drive. I can plug this into any computer that runs on a, I dropped it, <laughs> any computer that runs on a basic processor uh, and, and, and 64 bit processor, I can plug this guy in and I can boot the computer into this and I can run this. So I can put it on this computer. I can put it on this computer. I can put it on any of my laptops. And that's a, a neat ability. You also, I mean, I just have so many of these laying around so that you can just go ahead and build your uh, build your Linux distro on one of these drives. And then you can carry this drive around. I could put this guy in a keychain and this could be a secure banking computer. I could throw it on my keychain and drop this into any computer without compromising the computer or messing up any options on the computer I'm looking at. I can also carry one of these around with me and if I'm at a friend's house and I really have to get online, I can use my own computer just using their system as a, as a shell. So Linux is easily portable. You can do that with pretty much any Linux distro. That's my default option really is to, to do that. Of course, I also have this hard drive here, which is a Linux, um, um, this is a Ubuntu Mate. I can pop this into any computer. So if my main power supply of this computer fries out, I can pop the hard disk out, drop this in another computer and it will run just fine. Can't do that on a Windows computer. It's essentially attached to the hardware. And then the fifth reason I pulled out to use uh, to use uh, Linux instead of Windows is the wide availabil availability of free and open source software. And that's becoming an important concept because the software, as the software in the open source world gets better and better, you can do all sorts of good things with the software without having to pay a licensing fee, without having to pay a subscription model, with, and without having to worry about what the software is doing behind the scenes or under the hood. And the software is getting better and better and better, such to the point where you can produce, uh, you can produce some, some uh, very, um, uh, very good videos. My videos are produced on Kden Live, which is a very fabulous video editor here. Of course, I'm recording this right now on OBS. So this is an open source free software package that is used to uh, it is used to um, 
I'll record all these things, all the transitions I'm doing is very easily done on a, on a system. We have the various web browsers. I have GIMP installed to edit images. I can also use Krita. If I don't you like GIMP, I can use either one of those. I have a full free Office suite available with all of the options that you will find in Microsoft Office. I have a variety of different sound players, screen recorders, all free and open source software that the code Vinny audited, we know what it does, and there's nothing really surprising back behind it. So with that being said, those are my top five reasons to use Linux in 2017. Way better options than Windows. Again, you might have a situation where you have to use Windows, but for the most part, you can get away, away with using Linux on, on most of the applications that you have. So with that being said, I encourage everybody to check out, uh, check out Linux, uh, install it on an extra hard drive, or like a, an extra hard drive or an extra USB drive, give it a test run, download a live key, watch the videos on this channel and several other channels to figure out the best ways that you can make that happen. So with that being said, Thanks for uh, watching, everybody. Just a couple final concluding uh, concluding remarks. If uh, uh, if you would like to help support the channel, I will have Amazon links down below for an Amazon affiliates account. So if you're going to plan on buying anything on Amazon in the next uh, next few days, next few weeks, and you'd like to help support the channel, use the affiliate link down the down the description below and uh, you know a small percentage of your sale will go over to switch to linux you can also support the channel on patreon at patreon.com uh, forward slash tom m so with that being said thanks for watching everybody and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux